Yeah. Well, we've had a good couple weeks. Um, yeah, now it's time to get back into game week. And uh, yeah, it's been interesting having these late buys um, where, you know, you play and you get all geared up and then you get a buy and then you get geared up and you play and you have another buy. And so I think it's, it's good for our guys to get them rested up and get them more dialed into school. But, you know, it's exciting to be back to game week. So that's what I got for you. Okay, glad you guys had some pizza. <laughs> See you on Thursday. Uh, why do you think it's been a consistent struggle on third down this season? Um, execution. That's what it comes down to, as it always does. Um, you know, a little bit is kind of how we sequence plays as well. You know, we're not, um, we know we've we got two plays and Sometimes that changes things and get it close to fourth and fourth and short and try to convert there. And, um, but bottom line comes down to just consistency and execution. Talked a lot about the, after the first bye week about how that was a time to do some self scouting. Mm -hmm. When you have them back to back like this, how do you do you do that same sort of self scout or how do you fill that time? Yeah. Well, we um, we got a pretty good feel after the first one because we got a lot of body of work that we're looking at, so we go pretty extensive there. And then certainly we add in what we play on top of that and any adjustments that we might have made or didn't make on you know all three phases, if that you know helped us at all and how our practice looked in terms of getting better at those situations. And um, you know we're still we're still emphasizing certain things. Certainly the third down thing more than we ever have in practice. Um, you know, you kind of have your practice templates that you go with on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Um, but when something's not exactly where you want it, whether it's kickoff or third downs or whatever on defense, we're going to go and spend more time on there. So we've been doing that for a little bit. And, you know, sometimes it's not as easy as snapping your fingers and away we go. But we'll just we keep working at it. Besides the general goals of winning both games and seeing individual uh, individuals improve, yeah. what specific aspects of uh, production would you most like to see have an uptick? Um, you know, I think on offense, I mean, this is basic of scoring some more points. You know, I mean, I really do. Um, I just think it always just feels like, are, are we playing – are we improving and we're playing like how we're capable of playing like do we have more to us do we play you know i felt like when we played oregon and utah you know on offense we played at a, a pretty decent level but i think we kind of all felt like we had another touchdown in us we needed another touchdown in us you know in that fourth quarter we didn't produce and so i think those are the things that you always just feel like that's what I feel after games is when you come off the field it's like do you feel like um you know you're playing to, towards your capabilities you know or do you feel like there's just too many inconsistencies and all those type of things and um you know when we played Oregon State um felt great about our defense and our special teams was really solid and um and then on offense yeah, you know, we didn't we didn't do anything in the pass game. I mean, we had no guys making plays. And we just didn't, and um, and that can be such a momentum changer. You know, Jacob threw some nice balls in there, and um, we were just a little bit off, but nobody made a play for him. And if we make, you know, two of those plays, I think it just changes the momentum and the feel, and then everybody's pressing a little bit more. And, I mean, I think that's what it is. So, you know, I, I just think it's like you feel like, hey, we're playing really good, solid ball. It's never going to be perfect. I think many of us are perfectionists and we're always nitpicky in those things. But I think you just have that feeling walking off like, you know, that was that was how it was supposed to be. What's, what's the root of that when you say guys weren't making plays? Yeah, I don't know. You get paid to talk about that all day long. You know, I guess we do too. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean... I don't know. Really frustrating. You know, drop balls are frustrating, you know, and it's, that's hard to say. You know, it's like um, turnovers, 
You know, it's like, why are we not getting turnovers? Now we're getting turnovers. I mean, that's all we do is work on it. I mean, it's all we do is work on catching balls all day long. It's all we do is try to put our guys in tough situations and, you know, do that. And and then you go to a game and, you know, too many drop balls. Chris, when, when you diagnose it on either end and you're watching the tape, is it Jacob not necessarily finding guys on schedule or in rhythm, or is it guys not finding separation or... It's a, you know, it can be a little bit of all those things. You know, it's not ever any one thing. It's like, okay, this time would have been nice to maybe have it out a little earlier. This is like, you know, and then sometimes it's like that is a beautiful ball. And a guy like knows it's a beautiful ball and takes his eyes off it to run it, run with it. And it's like, huh? And then we get a 50-50 ball that's up there that our guy should have. And it's like... Really? I mean, I, I think I could probably catch that one. I mean, and and they'll catch it, you know, a ball like that 49 out of 50 times and just don't. And um, so we just keep trying to recreate those things in practice. That's what we do. There's not one instance where you're finding this is probably the main. I always say that, you know, when it's any one thing, you know, we can replace that one thing or we can fix that one thing somehow pretty quickly. You know, but most things, um, you know, have a, you know, there's a couple different reasons for it. And that's when you just try to, you know, I think you, you know, you, you got to like make sure we're going to stay after those areas and not go to a different area and kind of just dabble in certain things. Like if this is what we're going to do, we got to keep, we got to keep doing this and we got to keep recreating it in practice so the kids can have a chance to make plays. You mentioned earlier about Jacob Eason stepping, you want, encouraging him to step up instead of stepping out. Mm -hmm. in way. Is that something that's correctable uh, in midseason or is that something that's going to take an offseason? No, I, I think so. I think it's correctable and I think he's done a better job, you know. Um, yeah, you know, I think I think he's he's done better and that's something that they're paying close attention to at that position. But I think when a guy... You know, it's just interesting. I mean, you watch Montez at Colorado. He's the master at spinning out of those things and, and, and creating plays. And, um, you know, Jake Browning did that a lot. And then he get caught now and again. It's just like, so, like, what is he doing? So there's a little give and take with that. But I think everybody's got to play to their style, too. You know, Jacob Easton's a pocket passer. So he needs to step up, you know, and vertically and... And just get grooved into that. And I think he's, I think he's made some progress there. Chris, when you move over to the defensive side of the ball, it's, it feels, it's interesting that the defensive player of the week is not in the two deeps. Is, is Edifuan? Is he? Yeah. He no, I think he is in the two deeps. Um, I don't think I've seen that thing in years. Sorry, just so we're on the same page. <laughs> I mean, we're going to play a lot of guys, and, you know, this time of year, they're, they're all going to get in there, and you guys see what's going on. I mean, he's going to play, and he deserves to play more. It's, um, you know, that's, that's when you feel good about things. Like, um, you know, you see a guy like that taking the next step, and, you know, I think as a whole, the defensive guys really, really came together and um, got some pressure on the passer, you know, and they're just kind of fitting off things. And then, you know, Elijah Molden being able to, you know, see routes and he's really on his A game. And that's what it, you know, and that's what it's about. You just hope you're, you're improving. And I think those guys on defense took a real nice step this last game. Was that something that, was, that you felt was coming based on what you had seen in practice? You never, y yes. But I feel the same thing on the other side of the ball. I mean, I think the kids work hard, and, you know, I think there's good execution there, and there's no substitute for the game speed of things. But, I, you know, we feel like that, how we practice all that every game, that we're expecting that on, on all three of our, our, you know, phases. With Eddie specifically, you said after the game that he asked the right questions. I'm wondering for a young player, what does that tell you about a young player, and how rare is that to have someone who's kind of knows what to what to see and what to ask? Yeah, um, you know, I think I think a lot of guys, you know, especially when they're um, new and young, they just don't know what they're getting themselves into. You know, everybody talks a good game until you get here, and you get here in the summertime, and then you go into the fall camp, then you go through the season. It's just a lot different than it is in high school. And it's the same thing I know our guys that go to the NFL experience. So, you know, they train their tail off for the combine 
and they work and they work and then they get drafted and then they're working, working, working and then they get to the fall camp and then they get to game eight in the NFL and it is shocking. Like, it's like, is this not almost over? And it's not almost over. And I think we have that on a little, you know, on a mini scale. Our season is quite long, but it's much different than the high school season. It's just maybe intensity and time commitment. And so, you know, after a while, guys, they back down. You know, it's, it's all great early on. And those that can persist and keep studying and keep at it and keep practicing. And eventually, all, most of the guys come around. You know, they do. Some sooner and later. That's what I always say. You just never can tell the timetable that certain guys can handle it. You never can tell, like, you know, certain guys just don't get too balled up by the moment. You know, that's what I've been saying about Trent McDuffie. You know, he played in great football down there at Bosco and really well coached. And But we've had guys that have been in those situations before that it's like still takes more time. And so, you know, Eddie's um, done a great job of coming in here. And it's not just, he's not a true freshman, but he's stuck to this script for a year and a half now. I mean, it takes, and you you know, you can just tell because it's kind of how he shows up every day. And the different, the way he thinks about things, like you, you just, you know when a guy is real about it and other guys are fighting through it. You've got, what, two games left in the season. When you're talking, looking at your seniors, is that something that you talk about with them, time sort of running out, or is that something you really just go week to week and let them deal with? You know, I try to bring it up a little bit uh, to our whole team because it's like every year it's just completely different. You know, it doesn't matter. Um, just the chemistry changes. Um, and so just that we all just appreciate this, all the hard work that these kids have put in, all the hard battles that they've been through. And it's awesome when they all come out your way. And it is really painful when it does not. But still, these kids have, you know, they've really stayed focused and worked hard. And in some ways, which is more impressive than when it all goes your way. Because I've been on a lot of teams that it's like, yeah, they talk a good game, but they're not still putting the same work in. And I think a lot of these guys are, and I think they really care. And, you know, we still got three games left, and they're really, really important. That You know, we just, you know, I know it just sounds corny and all that, but it's kind of what we were talking about, just that we're just, we're, we're improving, and, you know, we're getting close to what we're capable of as this team and all these guys together. How does that differ maybe, like, specifically this year from years past? Um, well, we've lost some hard-fought games that we haven't lost in the last couple of years, you know, so it certainly feels feels different. Any, any losses, um, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 wish, I wish everybody in this room could experience it, what it feels like um, for everybody, for the coaches, for the kids, like how hard it is. And then you lose another one that you don't think you should and you don't play, you know, it's like that is adversity. And I know it's just sports. And um, there's a lot more things in life that are important than that, than winning and losing football games. We all get that. But in terms of the energy and the importance and the effort that everybody puts into it, it is hard to reload and stay focused and keep scratching and keep clawing and keep supporting each other. That's hard. And I think there's a lot of good that can come out of that, not just for these kids, you know, football-wise, but other things for them down the road. So now that you guys are bowl eligible, in your program building just over the years, how important are those extra practices, bowl practices for what you want to do? Yeah, I think they're, I think they're important. I really do. Because as we know, um, you know, there's going to be quite a few guys next year that will be factors next year that maybe aren't big factors. And so um, for us to really train fundamentals and techniques and um, and we'll, you know, we'll figure all that out when it gets to be bowl season, how many practice times we get and all those things. But I know this, it's, there's going to be as much urgency on those as anything we do around here. But that's a few weeks away. How, how's the feces doing right now? Yeah, yeah, like I said, MJ is practicing with us. He's out there running around. Um, he's not necessarily doing contact things, but he's in, you know, he, he knows when to pull off and, and all those type of things. So he is he is making good progress and he is, I think yesterday we practiced and he was out there and 
everything all the rest of the guys were and he was making progress but you know when you get something like that we're making sure that um his strength levels and all those type of things are no doubt about it and that he feels good and confident about things as well Richard Newton came back, carried the ball 17 times. What were your thoughts about his first game back? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to have him out there down the stretch of this? Yeah, I think he's, you know, he's, I think everybody in that, you know, in, the, in this program loves his mentality. You know, I just, I think you guys feel it too. When he gets the ball, it's like, this guy's kind of on a mission. Now, with that being said, it's hard to be out for a handful of weeks and come get thrown back in there because there's nothing like the game speed. And what happens a lot of times is those guys need to slow down a little bit, you know, to see things a little bit more and, and then put your pads down and go. And so it was awesome to get him back in there and get him rocking and rolling, and we'll keep building on that. What have you seen in Colorado this year compared to, you know, because of the regime change? Yeah, well, I'll tell you this. Um, I've been impressed with those guys. Like, they, they, they play hard. I mean, you can see that. And I know any time that there's a coaching change, it takes most times a minute to get everybody on the same page and all those type of things. But the one thing that jumps out to me is those guys play hard. Like, every game, like, you never know. You, look, you hear a team's record and you look at it and you think something that you put the table on and you're like oh this is different than you think and that's probably the one thing that I uh, has really grabbed my attention um, you know I don't think you pay attention to the records I really don't I mean I think they play hard I think coach Tucker's done a nice job I mean um, of getting those guys to play inspired I think their crowds from what we, you can see on tape, and that's a tight venue down there where the stadium's right on you, and they've had good crowds most of the whole season, and I think that helps them, and I think they play well at home. I think that's another thing that's... Um, and so late, cold night, grass, all those type of things, I mean, it'll be a good challenge. Up until the Utah game, Jacob really hadn't made like the big mistake in terms of the pick six and then yep. a couple in a row. How do you just kind of eliminate that from mm -hmm. the thought process? <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I think it's I think it's a little bit trial by error. You know, it's like he's made that throw and both those throws a lot in practice. Um, both those interceptions are like new concepts to us. But, um, you know, if you're a little bit late in the game or maybe the look was a little bit different, whether you should come off that, you know, those things happen that fast. And that's what I kind of keep kind of going back to with him. And, um, you know, he's a, he's a redshirt junior that's played, you know, going on two years now. And at that position, there's just so many different things coming your way. And, you know, I do think that... Um, you know, he's getting better with, with the reps that he's getting, but it's not going to be perfect, and there's going to be certain things that he wishes he had back. And and um, the more you see things, the better he gets. In your experience as a play caller, Chris, when you have a situation like that where a guy has maybe a particular issue with a, with an out route or something like yeah. that, are you, are you wary in the coming games? Are you thinking similar situations? Are you going, I don't know, should I pull the trigger on that? Or... Or are you more apt to like, look, I'm going to throw it right back. I want to see you do your thing. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I, I think this, I think there's certain routes you're always leery about and an out to the wide side of the field has scared me for 30 years of coaching. And, you know, there's been a lot of times that we just haven't done them. Now, Jake Browning threw quite a few of those, but I know he also threw a pick or two on those. And so I think a lot of it has to do with like knowing strengths and weaknesses of certain things. Also knowing what quarterback, like certain guys like certain routes and don't like certain things. And so we're always going to keep our quarterback. And if there's something that that guy doesn't like or really likes, we're going to lean towards those things for sure because they're all different. Certain guys like, I don't. You just tell me, you call it, I'm going to execute it. Certain guys are like, no, I, you know, if we had this play or this play, would you like, I'd like that play. 
And so they're all a little bit different. But I know this, you better pay attention to what your quarterback's feeling or it's going to be a problem. When, when you talk about Jacob specifically, is he the kind of like, just call it, I'll run it? Or is he having a dialogue with you? You know, I think during the game, he's like, you call it, I know, I know what to do. And then, you know, I think cert certainly during the week, you like to have discussions of, you know, what are the things that like in our offense do you really feel good about and what things are you more there and then you just tweak from there. So in the growth of the quarterback in that room, if he's got a tendency to like a certain pass, do you then work on him in the film room so that he can read better and then expand his ability to pass different routes? Yeah, so we would never put something in that they wouldn't know as a chalkboard expert, right? When, if they don't know it as a true expert on the board in the classroom, we're not putting that in. You know, that's not going in the game. We might practice it, but it's not going in the game. But a lot of us can be chalkboard experts and not get it down on that field, right? So then it comes to the repetition on the field so they can react in a split second. And then that look changes. There's, you know, there's five different coverages, five different looks that I can get it on any one route. And so you got to recreate those, you know, sometimes a bunch for certain guys and sometimes not as much. And then the more you have a guy in your system and the more the guy has seen those type of things, the quicker he's going to get it reacting and making good decisions. I was curious also, Chris, when the last couple of weeks, the, the Pac-12 officials have had a, a couple situations where they've either missed a call or made, made a, a call for the wrong team. And there's some other things that have happened. And then obviously you had the thing here with Chico and the, and the kickoff return. It, do you, are you, again, are you going to be more leery about trying to do some things and, and try to maybe push the envelope a little bit with officials that are, it, it just feels like they're not... Um, their record has been less than stellar, I guess. Yeah, I think this. Um, I think guys just get hypersensitive on things. We can't do something on third downs. You guys are going to be all over that. We had issues last year, and there's there's always going to be issues. No one's going to be perfect. You know, that's just part of the game. And as long as you feel like they're working their tail off to get them right and improve, and the processes are in, place to get it right and improve it, it's the game you know it's just not going to be perfect but I think sometimes you know um, everybody like it's you know the Pac-12 hadn't been in the playoffs in a couple years oh they're terrible oh the refs are no good oh they, I mean it's just the nature and it's just the magnifying glasses on it and somebody from another league makes a mistake it's like oh well that's you know I mean I just think that happens more so than not I mean if somebody calls it on the other guys and wipes off no it's on this I mean you know, I mean, there, it's just, you look at the NFL, right? I mean, there's all kinds of stuff going on on there in terms of guys trying to get stuff right, and there's reviews, and, you know, do you want them to get it right? Yeah, you do, but the game's never going to be perfect. Do you think there are attempts at being transparent with their videos and such? Do you think that's been effective? I don't even know what's going on with the videos. you guys look at videos that they show? No, and I'm being serious about that because I really don't know. They put they put videos out that you guys look, look at a couple times. Yeah, I think that helps. Like, I mean, it is what it is. You guys see. I mean, everybody sees it anyways. And if it's a wrong call, it's a wrong call, and move on and correct it. And everybody learns from it the best we can. I mean, what else are you going to do? But I definitely think transparency is the way to go. I mean, you can't hide any of that stuff. You also mentioned the the, pair, the kind of the conference and how it's doing. I think I looked and by the end of the season, you could have as few as five eligible teams or you could have theoretically as many as 11 yeah, yeah. I mean, talk about these last two weeks and the, the way the conference is going how do you kind of I've, I've said I mean I, I've been a broken record on this like nobody wants to give us you know any credit the last couple of years but the, say what you want to say there's parity in this conference there is par I mean it's hard to win and you just look at the scores and all those type of things and I know as the season gets on things shake out but you know I look at what's going on this weekend and I'm like yep everybody's got a good chance to win and that's what I mean there's no there's no gimmies there's not you better play good or you're going to get beat but do you believe that's good for the conference ultimately that's a great question like you know I, I you know if two of the teams that are running you know running off with it right now get beat that's probably not good for the conference but I promise you the teams that are playing them are going to try to beat them with everything they're worth and oh so be it if you know if we're playing one of those teams I'd be you know having a party we beat those guys you know that's how it is
Chris, before Puka got hurt, he was obviously a big part of what you're doing. We've seen Spiker play a little bit. Mm -hmm. Osborne has not been out there much. What, what in regards to him is keeping him from? Um, that's a great question. Um, he's right there. He really is. He's practicing well. Uh, I keep saying this. He's going to be a guy that will be in the mix, you know, sooner than later. I don't know what that means. Um, you know, we got some of these guys that have, you know, um, played a lot. You know, in some ways, we, we got a lot of guys that are that are similar. And um, you're looking for guys just to separate themselves, to do a little something. But he's doing a good job. He really is. I've been really impressed with him. And he he takes reps with, you know, in the rotation. He does some scout team stuff. And he doesn't flinch. I mean, whatever side he's working on, he goes 100%. And... Um, you know, I mean that. I mean, I've been I've been really impressed with his demeanor, and you know, to talk a little bit like Eddie, how he just kind of stays with the process, and here it is. I feel the same thing about Austin. You know, he just keeps working, and he's going to be the the player that we hoped he would when we brought him in here. You know, sometimes that's just not always on our timetable, but he just sticks to the process. He'll be a good player here. What, what are his strengths right now? You think? Um, you know, I think he's a big body. I do think he can make the tough catch. Um, you know, all the guys making the tough catch, you'd like to see him a little more consistent. And really still just kind of knowing, you know, our offense inside and out. I think when he gets that into his blood a little bit more, he's going to be able to play faster and more instinctual. I think he's a smart guy that if he doesn't know every little detail, sometimes that can slow guys down. And so, um, you know, not overthinking things so much. How much football did you watch over the bye? Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of sickening a lot. You know, you'd think I wouldn't watch any. And I, there was a time I did get out and went and did a few things, which was great. Um, I enjoy watching football, you know. I did Well, yes. No, I didn't see it when it happened. Um, I did see it. And, you know, it's unfortunate. I mean, this is football, you know. And it, guys get hurt in practice. Puka gets hurt in practice. You know, it's just, it's just, it is how it is. And um, I know we have great doctors and, you know, they'll get him patched up and healed up and he's going to be a great player down the road do you think to yourself in games that are kind of decided i guess late in the game that all right now it's time to get him out because i don't want to get a guy hurt <laughs> i mean you, you know i think there's late in the game each game is different but i think when you're in the first half and you know, or in the third quarter. I mean, I don't think most coaches think about that at all. I think they're thinking about, I know how teams can make a run on us if we turn the ball over, we don't do anything. That's all I ever think about. I'm never thinking, okay, we're good now until that clock strikes zero and sometimes late in the fourth quarter. Um, so it is what it is. I mean, you're, you're going out there and if a guy's playing, he's playing. So in your mindset, when you see what Oregon and Utah are doing, knowing how the games went up here, are you thinking, okay, that confirms what I believed about them, or is that kind of burning at you a little bit still? That oh, trust there? me. <laughs> they all burn. They all burn. You know, it's always about us. You know, I'm not worried about them. I know they're good teams and programs and all those type of things. And, you know, I kind of go back to what we were talking about when you feel like, you know, when you feel like you put your best foot forward and, um, you know, this thing can be cyclical, you know, with the recruit, with graduation and injury, all that kind of stuff. So you got what you got. And when you feel like you're, you know, you're, you, the kids are playing as hard as they can play and they're coached as well as they can and we're executing, you know, pretty much as, as good as we can, um, then you don't like it. But you shake your hand, you move on, you try to figure out how to improve. And that's always the case. But then I think sometimes when you feel like, gosh, we got, we got more to us. And that's how coaches are going to feel more times than not. I mean, it's always like, you know, I just think that's how we think as coaches. It's like, how, how, do, how do we help these guys? You know, how do we put them in a better position? And, it's, and you know, that's, that's what I do feel good about, you know, the guys on our staff and the kids in this program. I think the kids play hard and practice hard. And I think the coaches are always trying to figure out, how do we help these guys? You know, it's not them. It's us as coaches. We got to we got to help them, um, you know, give give us a better chance to, to make plays and win. Chris, you mentioned that the videos that the conference does all these things that happen that you don't see it. But we've had this conversation for years about backing the pack. Besides financially, how does it help the program if Utah or Oregon get into a Final Four? How does it help you? 
Well, I think it's all what you guys have been talking about for the last, or everybody's been talking about that, um, you know, the Pac-12s, this, that, down, guys are, you know, so if one of our teams gets in there, I think that helps us, you know, the league. I don't necessarily like it because then, you know, that's our direct competitor that's there. But big picture wise, you know, that's why I've always said, like, I don't care about those guys. I'm, I'm just worried about us. Like, can we get there? What, what do we need to do? But then when you step back, OK, if you're not going to do that, does it help if one of those teams is, is in the discussion for and obviously how it's been beat up ad nauseum for the last two years? Do recruits sense that? That the conference is getting hammered? Well, that's the negative part of recruiting. Mm -hmm. That's what everybody from the outside keeps telling all these kids, like morning, noon, and night. And, yeah, no you know, yeah, like why we need to come to this conference and all that. And like, you know, I mean, that's just recruiting. I mean, there's more to it than just that. Can you come here and play big time football? Can you play on a national stage? Are you gonna get a world-class education? Are you gonna get treated a certain way? Are you gonna play in your backyard for the most part? I mean, there's so much more to it than just, the, I mean, it's just, it's recruiting mumbo jumbo is all it is. And you know it, and I know it, you know. Unfortunately, the kids go through it for the first time. So it's like, yeah, I can't stay here. I gotta get out of here. Nah, no, you don't. All right. Thank you, everybody.